Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about pneumatics, what each component does, and how to wire up everything together. As a quick note, I will link in the description two documents that are very helpful for pneumatics. One document is by FRC and the other one is provided very helpfully by Team 358. So make sure you check them out in addition to this video. So let's start with the most um, crucial part of the entire system and that's providing the compressed air. So this is the compressor and it provides compressed air out through this uh, output over here. And if you notice these brass um, connections are over here, this is a pressure release valve. So if the compressor um, compresses air over 120 PSI, this pressure release valve will all automatically let the excess air out. And I will link in the description um, to a document that shows you how to put all of these together and make sure you put threaded, um, you put a pneumatics tape around each thread in order to help seal the air in better. Next up, we have our release valve. So after we compress our system, we need a way to let out the air. And then this is the valve that allows us to release our air and empty our system. So when the uh, knob is in the direction of airflow, that means it's on and it will allow air to pass. So this is how we empty our system. And by turning it the other way, uh, we block airflow. So no more airflow goes through it and we contain it in our system. So during our robot matches, we always have our compress, our uh, release valve on the off position to not let any air escape. Next up is our electronic pressure gauge. What this will do is it will uh, determine the pressure in our system. And if it's above around 115 PSI, it will start, um, it will shut off the compressor. So this electronic, uh, this uh, pressure gauge is also in a loop in with the compressor. Whenever the PSI is below um, 115 approximately, um, it's going to start um, compressing air into the system until it reaches around 115 PSI, 100 PSI, something like that. So this will make sure that the um, air in our system remains at a constant pressure. Next is our pressure gauge and like master pressure switch. Here we can control how much pressure goes into the rest of our system. It has a pressure gauge to tell us how much pressure is in our system. And with this knob, we can control how much pressure we want, the maximum pressure we want to be allowed in our system. Next up is our solenoid valve. What is this? Well, basically it takes in air through one uh, input, this one in this case, and then depending on which signal I send to which wires, it will redirect that airflow to either one of these um, ports or these outputs. So air comes in here and I can direct the airflow to go either out through here, out through here, or out through none. And this is very um, useful for pistons, which I will show in just a second. Next up is our PCM, our pneumatics control module. This is what connects everything together and gives um, our electronics uh, a way to communicate with our pneumatics. So all our solenoid valves, such as these, are connected here. Our compressor is connected here. Our pressure uh, electronic pr uh, pressure gauge is connected here. And it's all in a system. And then you connect this to your um, CAN bus and to your power distribution board. So this is really how you connect your pneumatics um, to your control system. And there's a separate video on how to wire up your control system. I'll link that down in the description. And then lastly, what provides our mechanical um, our mechanical movement is our pistons. And uh, pistons is just a shaft that can move out and in depending on where we apply air pressure. If I apply air pressure on the bottom, air is going to fill up the bottom of the piston and it's going to force the shaft out. And if I put in air through the top port, it's going to push air down and push the shaft down with it. So we can see how the pneumatics control module, uh, the solenoid um, valve will allow us to move the piston back and forth. And then um, I, before I forget, uh, let's not forget the air compressor, uh, or sorry, not the air compressor, the um, pop air tank. And this, what this does is it takes in air from the air compressor and it stores compressed air for us to use. Um, 
sort of like a, a battery that stores the energy for later use. Um, this will store our compressed air for us to use uh, very rapidly. So if we're using a lot of compressed air, faster than the compressor can supply, we'll usually store them in air tanks so we can use them rapidly. And if we have a lot of pneumatics we're using, we can connect multiple air tanks in series. And, um, and then obviously the last thing is our uh, pneumatic our tubing and our way to cut that tubing and then some fittings that we will see what these are used for in just a moment. So, so uh, let's start with our air compressor. So to start with our air compressor, we first need to connect our air compressor to our air tank. And to do that, we'll take some tubing that we can cut with a tool such as this one, or scissors if you want, as long as you try making the cuts as straight as possible. And the way we plug them in is we simply plug it into um, the connection. And then that way it's just a one, one way connection and it can't come out. If I do want to take it out, I push down on this lip and I can pull it out. But for now, we're just going to connect it to our air tank. And that's the first part done. Next, we're going to take our air tank and we are going to connect it to this three-way um, T tubing. So we'll get some pneumatic tubing and we'll connect it to our air compressor. Why do we want to split the air? Well, we'll see why in just a second. Next up is going to be our pressure, our pressure gauge or our electronic pressure sensor and we are going to connect it through one way um, through the uh, through this module and then connect it out to our release valve so that will look like this yeah we'll connect it to our gauge like that and then on this other end we will connect it to the pressure release valve so I'll take some tubing and um, I ran out of tubing, so I'm going to cut a small piece of tubing. And depending on your robot, you're going to have to cut um, tubing to different sizes. So here. And we will connect the release valve. And this provides a way for us to empty out our system. So if we have too much compressed air or we want to empty it for safety protocols, we can simply empty it out through here. And then next, and then this part right here is going to connect to our mechanical movements, such as our pistons and solenoids. Uh, next, we're going to connect our, um, our control gauge on the end of this tubing, and then we connect the the other end of our tubing to our solenoid valve and then our sol and then our solenoid valve will then have two additional tubes going into the two ends of our piston just like that now that we have our um tubing all done, we need to do the electronics and we wire that up to the pneumatics control module. So let's begin with our solenoids. So our solenoids are going to go into these numbered ports and red and black wires from each uh, pair will go into the same number. So I'll move this up here for better clarity. But the red will go into the red, and black go into the black. And the number you choose doesn't matter. Um, it's just this is the number you're going to refer to in your program to activate your piston. And we do the same for all the wires on our solenoids. And in the 
end, give your uh, connections quick pull and make sure that they're in there secure and they won't come out during the gameplay. And you might have to check your connections between matches. Next up is our electronic pressure gauge. Next, we're going to connect it to where it says pressure switch. So over here, we will take the two ends and we will connect it to the two terminals, the two blue terminals. Give it a quick pull, make sure it doesn't come out. And be careful with stray wires as well, that um, strands of wires don't connect, that as it may cause a short. And then lastly, we're going to take our compressor and we are going to connect our compressor to where it says compressor out. And the reason we connect it here and not the power distribution board is because in the pneumatics control module, it will be able to turn on and off the compressor in order to maintain a proper pressure in the entire system. So whenever the pressure drops too low, as detected by the electronic switch, it will then um, it will then turn on the compressor in order to replenish the lost compressed air. Now when and then there we go, and we have wired up our electronic portion of our pneumatics. And the very last thing is to connect this to our uh, control system. And like I said earlier, there is a video on how to wire our control system in the description. But these two ports are going to be connected to our PDP, our power distribution board, um, right next, in the same place where we connect our voltage regulator module. And I'll show you where that is in just a second. And then we connect um, the CAN bus to um, our PCM through these ports. So one end, one yellow and green come in through here, from one end of the circuit, and then complete the uh, loop through the other green and yellow in your system. So it will be in series with all your um, motor controllers that use CAN bus and your PDP and Robo reel. And that is really all, that is all there is to it um, for, our comp for our pneumatics video. Thanks for watching and wish you a good season.